that God indelibly imprinted in my mind the day that I met Jesus. And I'm grateful that I'm able as the years roll on to count the years and to count the days. I thank God for this testimony that at least uh, is 74 a point uh, something percent to be exact of my life have been serving the Lord in serving the Lord. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Amen. I'm 60 years old and I've been serving in 44 years. And I praise the Lord for that. Amen. I tell you what, I'd rather have put that 44 years in for Jesus than in the club, in the world, in sin. Amen. And shacking up, and mugging and thugging, thugging, killing and stealing. No, I'm glad. I'm glad for every day that I've been in Jesus Christ. It was the greatest decision that I ever made. And Mother Turner, while your husband was preaching, I can't remember what he preached, but I remember how I felt when he was finished. And it was a decision that almost didn't happen. Sitting beside my cousin, her name was is Quana, and uh, she said to me, uh, Pat, let's go. And uh, I told her, I said, well, I think I'm going to get in the prayer line. It went prayer lines back then. And uh, when we got up to exit our, you please be seated, ex exit our pew, she turned right and walked out the church. I turned left and found myself in the prayer line. And there I stood while the preacher prayed for each person. I had a conversation with myself. I said, I am not going to get saved today. That preacher can't make me get saved. These people can't make me get saved. I don't care how much hand clapping and all that stuff. I'm not getting saved. And when he lay hands on me, I am not going to participate. I was uh, on the wrestling team and I was uh, on the football team. And my coach back then was Coach Hal Stewart, and he's sitting up there right now. Wave your hand, Coach Stewart. Praise the Lord. There's my coach right there. And uh, in those days, I had the devil in me. Praise the Lord. I was strong and young, but full of the devil. And I'm standing there in my junior year in high school saying I'm not going to get saved. And I'll never forget, I put up my defenses and I said, when he lay hands on me, I'm not falling out. You know, I'm strong. He can't knock me down. He can't push me down. Uh, that goes to show my mind was all in the wrong place. But God loved me. And when it came down to me, the man of God looked at me and said, young man, the Lord told me not to touch you. The Lord told me not to lay hands on you. The Lord told me to tell you to get on the altar and talk to God for yourself. That I had not planned on. And I got down on my knees and I said to the Lord at the age of 16, having tasted sin and liked the way it tastes. See, I hadn't been in sin long enough for it to become miserable. I was just in sin. Praise the Lord. I loved the club and loved girls and the girls loved me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say amen. Say amen again. Say amen a third time. Yes, sir. Thomas James Wooden, senior son. And so uh, there I was. And I said with no emotion, save me, Jesus. And nothing happened. I said it again, save me, Jesus. Nothing happened. I said, save me, Jesus. And I heard a voice speak to me and said, ask me and really mean it. It's indelibly etched in my mind. I said with sincerity, Lord, save me. I felt something begin to break up in my heart. 
And I said it again, and I felt it really beginning to move. I said, I got to get out of here. So I ain't never felt anything like that before. I got up to get away from the altar. If you were in the pulpit, I was on the right side of the altar, sitting out in the audience. I was to the left. Mother Turner was sitting over there in the left-hand corner in her chair. By that time, she's standing up because souls getting saved, people getting delivered. And uh, I got up to leave the church, and I felt that someone grab my right arm and snatch me around. It identified with me because when we were not in football, the season was over. And what Coach Stewart would make the players do is you join the wrestling team so you could stay in shape. The wrestling teach you pressure points and how to handle a person. And you teach you right quick how to bring someone to, the, to their knees and a pressure point is the wrist. If you grab somebody's wrist with a good grip, you know what you're doing. First of all, all of their attention goes to trying to get their arm free. That means the rest of their body is open for you to do whatever you need to do to them. And so somebody grabbed my wrist and I said to myself then, now these people can't make me get saved and I looked around to see who grabbed me and Elder Turner was off praying for someone else. So it wasn't him. And a little old church mother, Mother Williams. Mother Williams stood about close to five feet tall. She was standing with both hands covered, praying for me, looking right at me. I heard a voice speak to me audibly and say, I am God, and you can't get away from me. I began to weep and began to cry. I said yes to the Lord, and I'll tell you something. He came in and saved my soul that day. Saved me. Took away my sin. Yes, he did. Forgave me of my sin transgressions and uh, I'll, I know what people say um, but I'll tell you what happened to me when service was over I walked out the church and uh, I looked at my hands and my hands did look new now, they may have been the same old hands but they looked new I looked at the sky it was bluer the clouds were whiter praise the Lord I started walking and I had a brand new walk and I, I listen, I, I was so happy, but I said, now I don't know how long this is going to last. I'm going to ride it, and, you know, for, you know, because uh, I, you know, I didn't intend to get saved at all, so I didn't know how it was going to last. And God knew what it took. I went to school, and by the time I got to school that Monday morning, everybody was lined up to make fun of me. Ah, Pat got saved. He was crying in church and all that, and uh, they were making fun of me. And I went to class, and there was a girl sitting behind me, prettier than an angel. And we had a little history. And uh, I had told her, I'm being honest, I had told her, we had both said that we were scared of Christian people, sanctified people. It wasn't Pam. It was another girl. <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, so... Uh, and so she kept tapping me on my back and I wouldn't respond to her. You know, you're supposed to go to class to learn something. And I wouldn't respond. So I finally looked back at her and I said, you know, when I told you when we said that we were afraid of Christian people, the most sanctified, shouting people, she said, yeah. I said, well, I guess you got to be afraid of me now because I got saved. I'm one of them. And she looked at me and she said to me, you ain't saved. And when I looked at her, I almost said, you're right. But I remembered. <laughs> oh, well, I like that. <laughs> My brother, it almost got taken back right then in less than 24 hours. But I remembered that feeling. And I said, yes, I am. Yes, I am. And then on the way home from school, a cheerleader told me. She said, oh, Pat, I heard you got saved, but you're just like the rest of us. I'll give you two weeks, and you'll be right back out here. She meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Because I've always responded to challenges. Amen. And that, that, that hit me somewhere on the inside of me. You know, and I said then, if I don't make it but two weeks in one day, I'm going to make it. And when I buckled down, 
I had to separate from my old friends. I got to make it for two weeks. I don't want no girls to call me, and I ain't calling them for two weeks. No beer. I don't want nothing. Two weeks. Marijuana, all that. We're out. I got to make it uh, to the city if it cost my life for two weeks. And as I began to try to do that, two years passed before I thought about her challenge again. And I said, if I can make it for two years, I can do this for the rest of my life. And here I stand in 2021 by the grace of God, still doing it, still saved, and I'm glad about it. Amen. When I went to college, I didn't backslide. He kept me. God bless me to marry the finest woman in the world, my wife, Pamela. Amen. Brother Ferguson, she was out there in sin. I warned her. Amen. That's right. I'm her spirit. I'm her pastor, spiritual father, and husband. Amen. And for 34 years, uh, for 41 years, years almost 40 almost 41 we've been walking together we've been here pastoring for 34 and been walking with Jesus for 44 years today Lord I thank you all the praises belong to him 